So far this year, we have really focused on multiplication. Starting today, we're going to learn about a new operation that's related to multiplication. That operation is division. So you can think about multiplication and division much like you think about addition and subtraction. You probably know from first grade and second grade that addition and subtraction are opposites. Well, the same is true for multiplication and division. Those operations are related, but they're opposites. So division and multiplication are both operations that involve equal groups. And you've heard that term so many times this year. When we think about multiplication, we think about equal groups. We think about how many groups are there, how many items or objects are in each group, and then we count them all together to see how many items we have in all. That should look familiar, and so should this chart. The number of groups times the number in each group gives you the total or the number in all of the groups. Let's think about how we would solve this multiplication problem, and then we're going to look at it as a division problem. So in multiplication, I know how many groups there are, and I know how many items are in each group. Those are the two pieces of information I always know. And in multiplication, I'm always trying to find the total or the product. I'm trying to figure out how many items are in all of the groups together. So in this problem, for example, it says there are nine youth soccer teams in our town, and there are eight players on each team. So our number of groups is nine, because there are nine teams, and there are eight players on each team. That's how many items go in each group. The question is asking how many players are on all of the teams, and that's the piece of information that's unknown. That means we don't know how many numbers, um, we don't know how many there are in all. It's unknown, it's missing. Let's draw this as a picture. There are nine teams. I'm going to represent those teams as circles. One, two, three, four. I don't like the way that one looks. Hang on. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. So there are my nine teams. Now I'm going to put eight players on each team. I'm going to do that now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. You can see that I went ahead and did the rest of the circles to save time. Now, if I wanted to figure out how many players there are on all of the teams, I would have to count each of those lines and see how many I get. So, I know there are eight on the first team, eight, and I'm going to count on from there. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And I'm going to pause this and go ahead and finish counting to save time. I went ahead and finished counting, and when I counted all the lines in all the groups, I ended up with 72. That means there were 72 players in all. And if you scroll down, um, you can see this multiplication sentence right here. There were nine groups with eight players on each group or team for a total of 72 players in all. All right, let's think about this a slightly different way. Okay, this time we're going to use division 
to solve this problem, and I want you to pay attention to the difference between the problem we just did and the problem we're doing right now. It's going to be very similar, but there's one distinct difference. When I read my problem this time, it says there are nine youth soccer teams in our town and 72 players all together on all the teams. Each team has the same number of players. How many players are on each team? So let's think about the information that we do know. I know that there are nine youth soccer teams in our town. So the number of groups is nine teams. That hasn't changed from the problem before. There are still nine soccer teams or there are still nine groups. Then the problem tells me there are 72 players all together on all of the teams. So that means the number in all of the groups is 72. The question or the piece of information that I don't know is how many players are on each team. That means I don't know the size of the group. I don't know how many players are on a single team. So the way I solve this will look a little different. Since I know the number of groups, I can still start there and I can still draw nine teams or nine groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whoops, and nine. Okay, so I have my nine teams, but this time I don't know how many lines to draw in each team. That is unknown. This is the missing information that I'm trying to find. So since I don't know how many um, players are on each team, I need to think about it a different way. Since I know that each team has the same number of players, I can start giving these players out to each team, I can kind of think about it like sharing. I have 72 players and I wanna share those players with the nine teams. And I wanna make sure that each team ends up with the same number of players so that it's fair and it's equal. So to do that, I'm gonna start putting one player on each team until I run out of players. So I'm gonna give this team a player, this team a player, this team one player, this team one player, and so on. Okay, so now each team has one player. That's only nine players, and there are 72 players altogether. So I can keep doing that and counting on. So this was nine players, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So now I've given out or shared 18 players, but there are 72, so I need to go through again. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, I'm going to go through again, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So I've shared or given out 36 of the players, but remember there are 72, so I'm not going to stop counting until I give out all 72 players. So I was at 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 
52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72. Okay, so those 72 players have been divided onto nine teams. Now that I've done that, I can go and count how many players are on one team. And it should be the same for each team because I gave them out fairly so that each team would have the same number of players. So pick a team and count how many players are on that team. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I just figured out this unknown piece of information. I figured out that my size of the group is eight. That means there are eight players on each team. Let's take a look at your first problem today on your seesaw assignment. If you want to pause this video and go get a piece of paper so that you can do this with me on paper, that might be a good idea. If you do it with me now, all you'll have to do is transfer it to seesaw for part of your assignment. So I'm kind of doing the first one for you. So if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do that now. You can see that I have recreated that table that we saw from those first few examples. And I've done this for you on Seesaw as well. This table will already be ready for you and all you have to do is fill it in. So number one reads, there are 28 desks in a classroom. The teacher puts them in groups of four. How many groups of desks are in the classroom? Let's go ahead and think about what we know in this problem. I know that there are 28 desks in the classroom. That means there are 28 desks in all. Okay, this is cutting me off. That should be 28. Hopefully you can see it. Okay, <laughs> there are 28 desks in the whole classroom. And I know that the teacher puts them in groups of four. So that means in each group, there are four desks. And the question wants to know how many groups of desks are in the classroom? Well, since the question is asking me how many groups there are, that means that's what I'm trying to find. This is the unknown that I'm solving for. If I were to write this as a multiplication equation, well, I don't know how many groups there are, but if I do something times four, I will end up with 28 desks. This is what we call a missing factor equation because one of the factors the numbers that I multiply is missing. So what I'm trying to do is figure out how many groups of desks there will be. So that means I can't start by drawing some number of groups. I don't know how many groups there are. This time I have to work backwards. I'm going to start by drawing all 28 desks and I'm going to pause the video to go ahead and draw those. Okay. Each of these lines represents a desk. There are 28 lines or 28 desks. Now, since these desks are put into groups of four, I can circle groups of four. So one, two, three, four. This is one group of desks. One, two, three, four. This is another group of desks. One, two, three, four. Here's another group of desks. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna continue doing that. Okay, I counted four desks and then I circled. And I ended up with one, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, I got cut off, but as I was saying, now that I have put those desks in groups of four, so there's four desks here, four desks here, and so on, I counted four and then circled them, I can count the number of groups I made to figure out how many groups of desks there are. So here is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. There are seven groups of desks in the classroom. Let's go ahead and do one more of these together. All right, I went ahead and made this chart again, and you will have it on Seesaw. Number two reads, three friends are given a pack of trading cards to share equally. The pack contains 18 cards. How many cards should each person get? So again, let's think about what we know. There are three friends who are given a pack of trading cards. So we can think about those friends like groups. There are three groups or three people. The pack of cards contains 18 cards. So that means that there are 18 cards all together. 18. And since the question says, how many cards should each person get, that means my unknown information is how many are in each. See how this is the number in each? and the question also has the word each in it, that's a good sign that this is what's missing or unknown. If I were to write this as a missing factor problem, I know my number of groups is three times something, I don't know how many are in each, equals 18. So, since I know how many groups there are, I can start by drawing those three groups. One, two, three. There are my three groups. I don't know how many objects or cards to put in each group, right? That's what I'm trying to find. I don't know how many to put in each one. So to make sure it's fair, I'm gonna take those 18 cards and I want you to really picture this in your head. Picture that you have a pack of 18 cards. Can you see it? Can you imagine it? And if you wanna share those cards with 18, I mean, I'm sorry, if you wanna share those 18 cards with three of your friends, how would you make sure that each friend gets the same amount? you would probably start passing out your cards one by one until you run out. And you would make sure that each friend ends up with the same number of cards. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in our picture. So I'm gonna start passing these 18 cards out one at a time until I run out. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, I gave out all 18 cards to my three friends. How many cards does each friend have? To find that answer, I just need to pick one of my friends and see how many cards they have. I'm going to do this last one on the end. One, two, three, four, five, six. So each friend gets six cards. I found the missing piece of information. So as you work through these division problems today, I want you to fill in this chart with the information you know, 
and then think about how your picture can help you solve for the piece of information you don't know. Good luck on this. Let me know if you need any help today.